Hello everybody, welcome to Ether Insight. Today I will show you how you can upload a folder with uh, multiple files uh, to IPFS using the IPFS command line interface. So let's get started. Before we begin, let's do a quick recap of what IPFS is. What is IPFS? Why do we need IPFS? How does it work? How does it help me? So IPFS, it stands for Interplanetary File System. It's a peer-to-peer -peer distributed storage network and protocol. What does that all mean? So basically, you add a file to the IPFS uh, protocol your file is split into smaller chunks and uh, you know it gets a unique ID called the content identifier or CID and the CID acts as a permanent record of your file as it exists at that point in time so your file will generate a unique ID and IPFS will recognize your file by this ID when other people other nodes look up that file they ask their peer nodes who who's storing that file uh, you know that is referenced by that CID and if someone near to them is storing that file then they just access that file now the way you ensure your file stays you know your, your data is saved somewhere the way you ensure that is by pinning it if you don't pin your file, then it might get garbage collected. You know, it, it will get erased after a while because, you know, people have to pay for storage, right? The way you can ensure you your file will always stay in the um, IPFS um, ecosystem is the, you pin the content. And pinning is something that you can do yourself. What you need to do for pinning is you have to have a node uh, running, IPFS node running, and you basically use your storage to pin that file so that it's always there when people want to access it. And whenever you upload a new version of your file, let's say you make a small addition to a text file, it generates a whole different hash or a CID again. So it's a different thing. IPFS will treat your changed file as a different file. So this gives you uh, the benefit that once you upload a file to IPFS, uh, no one can claim um, to create a different file and say, you know, this is the same file because you can check the content ID, the CID, and you can verify that the file that I shared with you originally um, is the right one. So, you know, it's really interesting stuff, um, IPFS. Uh, there's a lot to read, and uh, even for me, I have a lot to read still, but this is just an overview of what IPFS is and how it works. Now, for a big file like an image file, something like this is going on internally. You know, we don't have to go too deep into this, but let's say you upload a file that's larger than uh, 256 kilobytes uh, each this image is split into multiple chunks and then uh, it, it, it will generate digest for each of the chunk and, and all of the digests are added into a single CID. That's how the content ID for that image is created originally when you upload it to IPFS. So this is how it works. And uh, once again, you don't have to go too deep into this um, to start using IPFS. And the interest in NFTs... Uh, around you know early 2021 really accelerated the interest and need for ipfs the whole point of nfts and crypto based uh, tokens digital tokens is that it is decentralized and people want as much decentralization as possible which meant um, you know uh, ethereum is already decentralized but that image of the board ape uh, will not be stored in uh, Ethereum blockchain. So where will you store that um, image? What happens is in the NFT contract uh, for each of the token that's minted, for example, 
this board ape is token number 4885 you can go to this link and then you'll see a page like this this is contract address for board ape yacht club uh, you can query the metadata uh, the token uri for token id 4885 and it will give you a string ipfs address and then you go to this ipfs address and you'll see a file like this now this is a metadata file uh, the metadata file will say where the image of this token is stored and in this case the image is stored in ipfs also so this file is also stored in ipfs this file has the image uh, location which is also in ipfs and if you go to this image um, ipfs uri you'll see this board api club image so this is how um, you know nfts work so you don't actually need to use ipfs right here Right here, the image can be pointed to your local laptop. You know, it, it can be pointed to a cloud storage uh, service. It can be pointed to anywhere where, for from where you can serve this file. But as a best practice, people store their files on IPFS because it's decentralized. And once the Board API Club founders, they've said that this image. Uh, is uh, located in this IPFS address, then anyone can uh, make a copy of this uh, this image, and then the CID for this image will always be the same uh, if they don't tamper with the image. So it's also a way to verify that uh, the image is the original. And with IPFS, all of that is decentralized. Hopefully, uh, this shows you how important IPFS is and why uh, you should be using IPFS, uh, especially for decentralized uh, projects like NFTs. And other than NFTs, you know, there are various use cases for IPFS. You can host a website on top of IPFS. You know, you can uh, really do many more things other than NFTs with IPFS. how you can find the metadata uh, for this board API club. You can go to that NFT and then go uh, scroll down to details and click on the contract address right here. It will take you to Etherscan and then click on the contract tab and click on read contract. Go all the way down. There's token URI number 20 and this is where you enter the number of the board ape uh, that you're interested in. 4885 is the one I'm interested in. So I'll query this. It will give you a IPFS URI. Now this is not something that you can just paste in a browser like Firefox or Chrome. You'll need either a special browser like uh, Brave, which is integrated with IPFS by default, uh, or you can also use gateways like um, ipfs.io to access this link. In my case, I will just go to Brave, and this is what Brave browser looks like. Um, and I'll just paste the IPFS token URI that I saw earlier, and this is what it looks like. You know, now this file, this that NFT pointed to this file. And then this file points to an image and some attributes. So now if I copy the image URI again, and I paste that in the browser, this is when I get to the actual image. And there we go, right? So this is how I get to the IPFS uh, file for this board ape. All right, moving back. So now I'll demo um, a, a way for you to upload a whole folder containing files to IPFS. And I will, first of all, upload a folder using the IPFS command line interface or the CLI. Uh, as you can see on the left, uh, this is what it looks like. Uh, I use a command IPFS add, uh, folder name, recursive, and then all the contents will be added. And then I'll go to the IPFS GUI application as you can see on the right here and then I'll visualize uh, my files that I uploaded and then I can 
and do things like pinning, which uh, will permanently store that um, image on IPFS. So let me move to the command line interface. All right, so I'm currently in a folder that's called IPFS folder upload. And in this folder, I have another folder called output. And if I were to list um, all of the files inside output, you'll see I have 1,000 1, files inside of the output folder. And then if I go to the output folder, I'll just give you a sense of what the files contain. Uh, so each of the file will contain a timestamp. So there is some content inside the file to make them unique. So I have 1000 different file text files inside of this folder. Let me go out of the folder. Now to interact with IPFS, you need to install IPFS in your machine. And to do that, you can go to ipfs.io slash pound sign install, and then you can install the IPFS CLI by clicking on install and the install instructions are here. And you choose your platform. Uh, in my case, it's Mac OS. And then I install my IPFS. You follow the instructions and you should have IPFS installed. All right, so once you install the IPFS uh, client on your machine, uh, the IPFS CLI client, what you can do is you can start the IPFS uh, service by entering IPFS daemon command and then you'll see something like this that will initialize the IPFS uh, service and the daemon will run in the background so that IPFS will run in the background on your machine. Now you'll see a few different uh, instructions here like uh, the, web, the web UI you can access the web UI by going to this link and all that. So so now IPFS is running on uh, my machine. I'll go to a new tab. I don't want to break that uh, IPFS uh, service. So I'll go to a new tab. And then I'll enter the command IPFS add output, right? And hyphen R, meaning recursively upload everything inside of output. Enter, and you'll see all my files are now being added to IPFS. And each of the file is generating a unique CID, as you can see. And after a while, you can see that all the files are uploaded. And each of this file, for example, the 999.txt file has CID of this. And finally, the, the output folder, the folder itself has a CID. I can access the folder itself, uh, which I'll show you in a bit. So this folder itself has this CID. I'll copy this. I'll go to the previous tab and you'll see that I have a web UI on port 5001 slash web UI. So I'll open this. I'll copy this first. And I'll go to the web UI, the 5001 port, and you'll see something like this. This is your web UI on your local machine. Now you can go to files, and then this is all the files on your local machine. Uh, now we've uploaded a, our, our folder to IPFS. I can import that into this web UI by clicking on import. And we've already uploaded the folder to IPFS. So I will say from IPFS, and I'll paste the CID of the folder, which we got earlier. So going back, once I can copy the CID, and I paste it, import, and this is my import. So this right here, right? This is the one I just uploaded. I can click on this, and you'll see it has all the files inside. So I just need to import this once. Now, because I have this imported to my web UI, you'll see that by default, the pin status of this folder is pinned, right? It is pinned, which means uh, this file will always be pinned on IPFS because I'm hosting it on my local machine. But if I wanted to remove this from IPFS and I don't want to permanently pin this anymore, I can just say 
set pinning, I can configure this and I can say, I don't want to pin this. I can uncheck this and it will be unpinned from my local node, right? So you can do this as well. So you can do these things by using the IPFS CLI. So to summarize, if you are building an NFT project or if you're building any kind of decentralized project or if you're just interested in trying out IPFS, uh, it does give you a way to store files and distribute your files to uh, your friends, your customers, your uh, audience in a decentralized manner. You can store the files in a decentralized manner. You can verify the, the files are uh, untampered. Uh, and you know you can really build something interesting using IPFS in your stack. So that's the end of this video. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Uh, put a like, put a thumbs up on the video. And if you have any questions, put them down in the comments below and I'll try to answer them uh, when I get a chance. If you have any suggestions for content like this, please post them in the comment section as well. And I'll try to make a content about that. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.